there was an internal foundry business model update and webinar that came out from Intel. Didn't land real well, um, but I'm not sure that the message was received entirely correctly. Are you taking this topic? No, I was just going to tee up. Just hold on. Hold on. Okay, I'm not sure up. it was received entirely correctly, but Pat, why don't you weigh in on this one first? Well, I was going to say what you said, but then I was going to say after You're that. You're going to say more, though, right? That wasn't it. I was just, No, I was no, just of baiting, course not. Just baiting a little bit up there. Yeah. So the company historically had done some updates about its about its businesses, right? The first one was for client computing, and the second one was for data center uh, and AI. And they were really an end-to-end -end roto routing of, of, of the business, and the business leads uh, got on there. And that had been the previous two drill downs. This was intended to be an internal foundry uh, conversation, not to be confused uh, with IFS, right? That that's run by Stu Pan. So, but but I think that 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 was missed, and it is very important to understand the the internal foundry model uh, at Intel that that was represented by not only um, uh, CFO Dave Zisner, but also by Jason Greeby, and I hope I, I said his his name correctly. But essentially, this was for the financial analysts to update their spreadsheets uh, in a way, uh, right, for margins, because it used to be that all of the margins that had to do with manufacturing and process were captured in the business units, right? Uh, but now that's going to be broken apart where, uh, you know, the foundry end of the business will have its P&L, and then the products product design companies uh, will be able to have their, their own P&Ls. And, and what that shows is, is say more, it gives investors a better view of how to view the manufacturing part of the business and then the uh, design products and sell side of the business. And I think that's, that's very valuable, right? You can compare it to NVIDIA, you can compare it to Intel, and you compare it to TSMC and in the future uh, global foundries. What it also does, and this is an important thing, I spent a lot of time inside a processor company, is, is the motivations uh, of, of the business units. When you set up something like this, and if you're running, you know, let's say you're Michelle and you, you're running the client business, right? Uh, it's setting you up where you have a much better idea of how profitable your client business can be on whether you do it in the internal foundry or quite frankly, you do it at TSMC or Samsung, right? That's that's what this is setting up right now, which is very healthy. I do not think that this is setting up some short term for some short term uh, uh, break off or or something like that. But overall, I think the the sell off was based on this notion that they wanted an IFS stew to come up you know, and talk about a new 18A customer, but that, that wasn't what this was uh, set up, set up to do. So I think long-term, I think I would have handled it a little, little bit differently because, you know, knowing the expectations coming in. Uh, but uh, I, I also know that we're going to have an IFS update very shortly where that information I think investors were looking for uh, will be, will be more apparent. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is one of those situations where the company does so much, it's easy for things like this to get conflated. And, right. um, you know, I think there was some strong benefits presented, but it just wasn't the presentation people were looking for. I think what people wanted was Intel to come out and say, hey, we've got some huge fabulous customer that's going to be using our foundry and we expect some rocket ship revenue. And I think that's... in you know, that type of work is in the making. I mean, look, the, you know, the companies, you know, breaking ground in, in Israel and in Poland and in, in, in Germany and in, in Ohio. I mean, it's the investments in its manufacturing yeah. capabilities and capacity are, are, are material. And, you know, knowing that the demand for semiconductors is not going to go down anytime soon. Now, again, there will be waves, there's ebbs and flows. But what I mean is, every industry, every business, every technology, and if you believe in this AI trend line, then you, you better believe that uh, there's going to be more semiconductors needed. And you also have to know with all the global macro forces, whether that's China, Taiwan, 
whether that's Ukraine, whether that's uh, you know national security, uh, global technology leadership, that Intel is the largest beneficiary of any sort of nationalistic uh, investments that are being made, as well as any sort of ally investments across a global scale, and then the supply chain itself and the resiliency. So, you know, there's there's a definite opportunity for the company to use its internal foundry, uh, you know, do things, you know, it talks about for benchmarking, it talks about cost optimization, and it talks about the fact that, you know, the company is the second largest foundry. Um, so, you know, it's not, you know, TSM gets a lot of credit, but Intel is in the, in the, in the running. Um, and so it, you know, I, I think that this is one of those situations where the market wants sizzle and what they got was, a very practical sort of update about some important business uh, items, agendas, and operating focus. Yeah, and like they couldn't just show up on earnings day and, you know, their BUs have like a super low margin and then it magically, they, they, they had to, they had to, it, and this was, I think, more for the institutional investors than anything else. Absolutely. Just I mean, it. you know, being able to show that their operating margin can improve over time, you know, which they had a slide for that uh, <laughs> and showing because that's been, I mean, that's been one of the biggest rubs on Intel is that it is the margin has just gotten battered over yeah. the last several quarters. Um, and obviously everyone's looking at that and then you're looking at the NVIDIA margins and you're looking at all the fabulous companies on TSM margins and then they're going, well, what's the future for Intel? Well, the future has to be getting this manufacturing foundry business uh, in order and starting to show that it can it can actually recapture lost margin that's uh, been lost and it's making massive investments to do so pat so look it, it it probably didn't land the way it was it was hoped but it also was an important disclosure probably an overreaction from the market um because it's still progress but again i don't think you can move fast enough and intel is always on a shorter leash than other companies right now so um now if intel wants to tell us about its new big lineup of GPUs uh, training uh, and of course some new partnership to take down Infiniband and you know make a real competitive run at Nvidia I think that would be a that would probably get a 10% jolt in a day so <laughs> but who knows anymore with this market